The Secret Truth Behind David Blaine's Magic by Patrick CC. I have not seen like any David Blaine's magic, but I hear he was doing some crazy stuff. Like, wasn't he the magician in the, the ice, the ice cube? Like, he was literally in the ice cube, right? I don't know how long it was, but yeah, bro, he, he could have easily died. Most people live their lives with the belief that magic isn't mm. real. David Blaine is commonly known as one of the most what iconic the? magicians in modern times. But simplifying David's stunts, I illusions, I do not know and performances one is magician. just magic gives the assumption that David it's Blaine. all fake. However, standing in a block of ice for three okay, days, three being submerged days. in water for seven days, and being trapped in a glass box for 44 days uh, were all very uh, real stunts what? that thousands of people for witnessed 44 with their days? That thing must Yet still, some are not convinced. He has been called a fake, a fraud, a jester, and they do anything to invalidate his work. What? Despite the annoying critics it. and borderline physical torture, <laughs> David Blaine continued to up the ante throughout his career. But why? That makes well, no sense. He's just like, I don't know. You see it. So it's like it's not a it's not a trick. It's not a mind trick. You see it. You see what he's doing right now. You could probably you could probably talk to an expert about what is he doing and if he's really doing it. And they'll probably say, yeah, he's doing it. He's doing it. However, David Blaine okay, okay. was the total opposite of Street this. Street magic. David wore a plain shirt oh, and sweats. Really. He was emotionless in the face and gave small, focused crowds of people magic on the street mm. for free. He primarily mm. did card tricks and some quarter tricks where he encouraged people to pay I attention remember as that. closely okay. as possible. The tricks were nothing spectacular, that. but what made it interesting were the reactions of the people. Mm. What? What? Look. <laughs> I remember these. This is like this is like some old YouTube stuff. Did he post this on YouTube? We had these. Turn your hand over. This is like some old YouTube stuff. Blaine performed for all walks of life, all races, all ages, and the outcome was always the all same. All streets. Being utterly like, confused like he's in like different states, different cities. Their own two eyes. His simplistic approach made other magicians hate him. When Blaine landed his first primetime television show on ABC in 1997, he was immediately met with criticism. A New York Times article was released that insinuated the virtually unknown street magician was only given a special because he had friends in some very high places. One professional magician insisted Blaine's best tricks could be found for about $30 at a Times Square magic shop. Hey, Jamie hey, Ian Swiss, hey, a magician and columnist for Genie Magic magazine said his only skill is removing money from a wallet and handing it to a person behind the counter swiss asserted that abc executives do what he had does. the wool pulled over their and eyes do what he does. it also didn't help that in the his first major interview on conan he, he was so nervous he messed up his card trick oh, his dang. first mistake was when he made this extremely choppy pass you can see him move the deck from back to front then he attempts to do a double lift, which is when he grabs two cards and makes you think he only grabbed mm. one. But he struggled while yeah, trying he to grab two. Messed it up. He Luckily, messed it up. he recovered and like most any other magician would, like any other magician would. He messed up. He nervous. He nervous. Errors. Blaine had no interest in addressing the criticism. They were likely just hating Blaine, exactly. and he simply wanted to make magic accessible to as many people as possible. David was inspired by the great exactly. Harry Houdini, who brought magic to people okay, on the it. streets. Okay. Plus, That's we have a the benefit name, of hindsight though. now, That's and we know name. that the traditional magic show aged like milk, and street performances or interviews is a format that remains extremely relevant 25 Yo. years later on TikTok, Yo. the number one app in the world. However, card tricks were not enough to keep David going. Square, he wanted man. to push himself to greater limits. <laughs> put his life Wait, on the line to prove he's truly one of a square. kind which led to his first to major public square, stunt just being buried alive with for them. a week straight Harry Houdini Never actually again. performed <laughs> at least three variations of the stunt during his career David was mesmerized by a poster of the final version of this stunt that Houdini never got to complete mm, due to his buried alive death. Mr. Beast Houdini did that come on man after being strapped in a straight jacket sealed okay, in a casket and then buried in a large tank filled with sand so I not do stare that. I love he that. He had a Joe Rogan interview. A kid. It's like in the magic books, you see that poster. I mean, I'm Initially, that. his friend and what? founder of the That's Conjuring real. Arts Research Center, Bill Kalush, been on suggested Joe that Blaine fake the stunt and discreetly sneak out of the coffin, then return a month later before the resurrection. But Blaine had no interest in faking. So he bought a casket, put it in his living room, and practiced sleeping in it. Then he practiced fasting oh, yeah, for 20, 20. days. He said he was able to do this for four days straight with no problem. Mm. So his goal Wait, was 
Wait, was no water, week, no buried food. Buried alive in a glass casket, so anyone could come and watch. Show on April fifth, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Is that States, a Donald Trump? Show, gave the bro. final send off as I David swear. Blaine entered the see through coffin that also had six tons of water on top. What? Blaine didn't eat for two weeks before the stunt, but continued drinking water prior to and during the stunt. Oxygen was mm, transferred okay. in and out through holes above his head. A catheter was inserted into Blaine's bladder to safely drain any urine. Spectators okay. would come and go whenever they wanted. He said people would shine flashlights on him at 2 a.m. to make sure he was really what in there. The... He said one of the hardest parts of the stunt was peeing while people were looking at him. <laughs> I suffered a little in here for this week, but I saw something truly incredible. People this is like an event. That is, that is fire. Critics said That's that fire. he had a trap door on the side of the coffin that led to another secret underground room with more space food and magazines to keep him entertained while that the body double took his stupid. place inside the coffin. That sounds They dumb. often pointed to the water being on top as unnecessary and was only there to distort people's vision so they couldn't tell the difference between him and the body double. And honestly, these are decent critiques. And the water. The but David water was thing. about to endure something far more dangerous than the, the water thing. Like, yeah. Why did, why did he have that water on significantly him? harder to invalidate. But first, let me mm. tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. In the year 2000, Blaine set out to remain frozen in a block of ice in the middle of Times square for 72 hours what? it was in After the middle training of time for a year square? with ice cold water blaine believed he was ready to endure a stunt he called this is like something in a time. early 2000 a movie t-shirt this looked like some early 2000 beanie, movie blaine began shivering as blocks of ice were placed around him a tube supplied him with air and water while his urine was removed with another tube the ice was transparent and resting on an elevated platform to show that he was actually inside the ice the entire mm. time during the stunt blaine couldn't sleep because touching the ice with any part of his body for so he was, a, period he was time, awake for 72 hours. Around hour 55, his eyes went out. Who's and he, he started talking hallucinating, to? saying He's that he was talking to imaginary people, and they were talking mm. back, and spiders were crawling all mm. over him. But he knew he was in serious trouble when he thought a few hours had passed, when in reality, only one minute had passed. Mm. And I was convinced that I was dead, and she could no longer see me. I'm just saying, let him out. As the crowd so shouts, a whole let people. him so out, what is, the this, assistants what? decide to set him free, despite David's demands to not let him out before so the 72-hour like goal mad real. under any circumstance. This is an event, just like the last one. So I'm like, if there's people there, probably like 20, pretty much 24-7, when could he, when could he do any of this? When could he do any of that? box of ice for 63 hours mm. 42 minutes and 15 that is seconds crazy before being removed with chainsaws mm. he nearly died in that ice but he just as easily could have died from shock after he exited the ice mm. he was immediately taken to the hospital for treatment it took one month to fully recover mm. he said he couldn't move his feet for weeks but this time mm. the critics were silenced there was no of way course. to fake this exactly. whether you saw it on tv or in exactly. real life you knew this was as real as it gets Josie. Yep. My mind. Yeah, this man, he's. This is crazy. <laughs> David told himself that he would never attempt a stunt of this difficulty in the future, but his yearning to face death would creep up again just two years later. Blaine swallowed a live snake and fantasized about doing you I mean, know what do it, right? from they swallow... the Brooklyn Bridge or dangling Dang. from a skyscraper. Well, swallow, uh, Nothing was live too risky for him, right? and each stunt had an increased amount of danger to keep it interesting. Vertigo, I don't know if that's the same, thing, all. Know know that's the same film, thing, was extremely risky, but also beautifully artistic. In the middle of Manhattan, Blaine stood atop a two-foot-wide pillar that's... nearly ten stories tall in New York City for two days and two nights, with no food, no water, no sleep, and nothing to sit or lean Man, on. This is one of his most underrated performances. 99.99% of us could not even stand for 35 hours exactly. straight, let alone being 100 feet in the air, constantly battling the exactly. wind. There was no safety net down, or precautions he, he didn't lay in down case or he fell. But the beautiful part about this stunt was its impact on the people. Thousands of New Yorkers halted their hectic and strenuous lives just to look up at David. Exactly. I think one of the most profound this, things you could do crazy. Uh, in Midtown Manhattan. They, they put off the chairs still, just to look at them. Uh, let alone for any length That's of time. That's hard. You know, to stand this still. This is a statue there, David for, Blaine. Uh, That'd be nice. Upon hours, a day and a half, in fact. This is a profound gesture for New York right now. As David put his mind and body on the line, he began hallucinating, Again. which caused the buildings and structures around him to look like animal heads. Uh. Then, at the last hour, David jumped off the pillar, not on a cushy airbag, but on rather a pile boxes. of empty cardboard boxes, and he somehow executed the jump 
perfectly. David was not just some lunatic adrenaline junkie. He, he was a performance exactly. artist who sacrificed his well-being for your entertainment. It. He even refused to get into personal relationships. Mm. I know that if I had kids, I wouldn't want to put them through the feeling that their father's mm. in danger, which is why Facts. I am reluctant to get into a relationship and think about that right now. This exactly. led to so many people wondering why. Why is he constantly putting his life on the line? Is it really for the sake of magic? Well, the motivation behind all of David's stunts for the is actually much darker than we thought. And we learned this while he was preparing for his 2003 stunt, Above the Below, where days. he'd be confined in a 3 feet by 7 feet by 7 feet transparent plexiglass box suspended 30 feet in it's, the it's air. Definitely the, it's definitely for the spectacle. All of these tricks are, even, even back then, he was doing pretty much old school public interviews. It was all for the public. It's like make a, a small event. Well, bigger event with the frozen thing and this and him standing on the, the thing in Manhattan. I don't know. Of London. His goal was to stay in this box for over month. a month. Yeah. I also consider it something that for me is like the ultimate truth. When you live with nothing, there's no distractions. Mm. You're just there as you are, struggling. I think that's the purest state you can be mm. in. Blaine later expressed how he loved the idea of Facts. death and hated life. Oh, so these stunts okay. really make me feel great. And I love making people watch suffering because I had to watch it my whole mm. life. Watch people I loved and were close to deteriorate and die. Dang. I saw everybody I knew, my mother, my father, drop dead. I feel the most alive when I'm going through these experiences. That was pretty dark. Exactly. That's there crazy. isn't much information about that David's crazy. personal so life the Doing that we know he was death. raised by a single mother. He says his father was never in his life. Mm. His mother was his first fan. He spent his days as a 10 year old reading magic books, practicing tricks, and crazy. performing them for her and her friends. At 15, she developed cancer, so his magic became her escape. When he was 17, he moved out of their New Jersey home and ventured into the Big Apple. Exactly. Sadly, just three years later, she passed away. Mm. We know today that David is a very positive, forward thinking, and happy mm. man, but for the most of his career, he had an extremely dark presence. It's unclear if his persona is just just an act or if it really is him wearing his demons on his sleeve but either way if he didn't survive his next stunt blaine wanted to be remembered as the greatest showman of all time in september I mean. of 2003 blaine sealed himself inside the box a webcam was also installed inside the box to observe his progress over 44 days despite blaine clearly I mean, partaking this is pretty in this much, endurance stunt i mean it's not so but it's with kind of like a a willing solitary confinement it's not though but it is <laughs> but it is but it's not but it is holograms or body like you can see people were also suspicious but regarding you're not communicating with nobody you know was laced with you know. nutritional glucose and sodium supplements which he adamantly denied david wasn't prepared for the hostility that came with being in a foreign country blaine was pelted with eggs and paint filled balloons what? golf balls were also struck in his Why? direction from tower bridge tabloids who were skeptical of his performance took the opportunity to stage barbecues beneath blaine and even flew hamburgers up to his box using a a remote controlled helicopter to taunt him. One man what? even attempted to sever the pipe that was supplying him with water. But don't get wow. me wrong, the support definitely outshined the hate. And they kept his spirits high until the stunt That's eventually crazy. ended after 44 days. This has been one of the most important experiences in my life. David worked breaking. closely yeah. with scientists and I mean, health professionals days. to study the human body through his performances. A lot of the time, they end up with more questions than answers. The New England That's, Journal of Medicine published a paper documenting his 44-day fast and stating his refeeding process was perhaps the most dangerous part of the stunt. Mm. Blaine only drank distilled water during his time in the box. The water lacked important minerals or vitamins. In the hospital, he was injected with an IV to replenish his mm. system. However, his body almost went into shock, which nearly Whoa. killed him. The study report that he lost 24 and a half kilograms or 54 pounds which was 25 percent of his original body weight and his body mass index dropped from 29 to 21.6 ironically though it was david's biggest failure that got him the most attention his failure came what? from attempting to break the world record for holding his breath underwater i've seen that image a young before magician, i was obsessed with houdini and his underwater challenges so I began early on competing against the other kids. I'm about to say early on. By the time I was a teenager, on. I was able to hold my breath for three minutes and 30 seconds. Mm. 
I would later find out that was Houdini's personal record. To grasp how long he could realistically hold his breath, Blaine met with a top neurosurgeon who informed Blaine that anything over he six minutes the could have the risk of hypoxic that's, that's, brain damage. He took this as a challenge. He began researching pearl what? divers and discovered met with a top neurosurgeon who informed Blaine that anything over six minutes could have the risk of hypoxic brain mm. damage. He took this as a challenge. Is, he began researching pearl not divers a challenge. and discovered various aspects not a of free diving. No, the first thing that he learned you, is when you you're can't holding breathe your breath, from your you should stomach. never move because that wastes energy and is that depletes a real? oxygen since physical movement is builds up CO2 in your blood. He also learned how to purge, which is when you repeatedly blow air in and out rapidly. After a while, you get lightheaded and start feeling tingly because you're ridding your body of CO2, making yeah. it easier to hold your breath. Yeah, that's for months, what, uh, he did this every morning. I would wake up and hold my breath for 48 what's minutes. That, what's that Swedish uh, Iceman do? He does that. He does that. Wim Hof. Wim Hof does that. Out of the course of every hour, breathe for a, for like a minute, minute, hold my breath for five minutes immediately like after, and then right after that, breathe a minute, hold for six minutes, and keep going for all the way up to an hour. In that process, your CO2 levels become so high, your body has to work like a marathon runner to get rid of it. By the end, his brain was completely fried and suffered awful migraines. Mm. He also lost 50 pounds in three months when he learned that the thinner he was, the longer he could hold his breath. I By eating swear, so well yeah. and training hard, his resting heart rate dropped to 38 beats uh. per minute, which is lower than most Olympic uh. athletes. Blaine figured he could place a water this tank is at Lincoln this Center in New York City, and if he stayed there a week a without demon. eating, he would Very get comfortable dedicated. in that environment. Ultimately slowing down his metabolism. He's doing it with sharks. He's, he's doing it in front of people again. He always does it in front of people. I ain't gonna lie, man. No way you can say this is fake. He, he always does it in front of people. At least from this video. But he was wrong. Blaine entered the sphere for a week before the scheduled air date, mm. but producers confronted him and told him that just watching somebody holding their breath and almost drowning would be too boring for television. In response, mm. Blaine added handcuffs, which he planned to escape from. I'll have to escape from all these Wait. chains, and if not, I will drown and the world will see something pretty insane. Blaine was submerged underwater and remained there for seven days while attached to a breathing apparatus. He underestimated how painful his hands hey. would be after they shriveled up. When seven days had passed, Blaine attached the chains and handcuffs, removed his oxygen tube, and then attempted to escape while holding his breath for longer than anyone in recorded history. However, because of the movement, Blaine was wasting oxygen. After he passed the seven minute threshold, he began having mm. convulsions and gradually blacked out. Kirk Crack, his trainer, and a diving expert, sent divers to release him and pull him from the tank. He failed to beat the record, and doubters all Dang. over the world celebrated his defeat. But he allowed researchers at Yale to- Yo, what you, what you talking about, doubters? What are you, what are you talking about, doubters, yo? What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? This man constantly mentioning, like, haters, man. Fuck. I ain't gonna lie, bro. But fuck the haters. What are you talking about, bro? This is crazy. This is crazy. Look at his face. This is crazy. What are you talking about the haters for? <laughs> it's like- It's like- just him and his own thing is just like of a madman done to see what they could learn about how the body responds to an underwater environment mm. which he saw as a big victory now faced with a failure oh, more so people dark. than ever were tuned in and wanted what to see is what that? In store so he got in contact with oprah and announced oprah. he wanted to up the ante on her show he wanted to hold his breath longer than any human in recorded history which was set at 13 minutes at the time oprah gave blaine four months to prepare and train oprah and in those gave four blaine months, four months what are you talking about oprah minutes. given any and we know that oh, he did on oprah's show very seriously he better when it got came a million time to dollars do this, this stunt, things started going wrong. Blaine wanted to do the challenge face down, floating on the pool. But for TV, they wanted him to be upright so they could see his face. The other problem was that the suit mm. was so buoyant that he had to strap his feet in to keep him from floating. It made him extremely nervous, mm. raising his heart rate. On top mm. of that, they wanted to add a heart rate monitor. The monitor was placed right outside the sphere. Yeah, they are every time his heart would beep, bro. he'd hear loud beep noises, which made him even more exactly. nervous. Exactly. They just trying to make it, it, trying to make it minute, so entertaining breath, that is... To 12 beats per minute. This time Way it dangerous. started at 120 beats and it never went down. He became more nervous, increasing his heart rate up to 150 beats. At eight minutes, he was 100% certain he would not be able to complete mm. the mission. For the sake of Oprah's show and his unwillingness to fail, he would fight until he blacked out. At mm. minute 12, he started to have ringing in his ears and simultaneously mm. his arm began to go numb. He was showing signs of a heart attack. Mm. At 13 minutes, Yo, he started he feeling pains all over his chest. At 15 minutes, he was suffering major O2 deprivation to the heart. His heartbeat would go from 120 to 50, to 150 to 40, to 20, to 150 again. At 16 minutes, Blaine cautiously slid his feet out of the straps to make it easier for the rescuers to take him out if he suffered a heart attack. Then suddenly, he heard screaming. He realized he had just made it to 1632 and broke the record. So with the energy of everybody that was there, he kept pushing. And he went for 17 minutes and 4 seconds. Holy! <laughs> 
This is crazy. David Blaine is insane. Live on Oprah, he broke a world record, which got that his middle-aged woman level fame. David Blaine <laughs> that, was known all well, around the world. He should have been got that with the, cocky, with the, which led with the to other one. With the other one. With the one he failed. You already know he got that with the one he failed. Come on, man. They love the news, and you know he's front page. Stop playing. His but now they love him even ever. more, though. In September you know, 2008, know. Blaine announced his upside down man. 60 hours. Blaine aimed to hang upside down from a crane for 60 hours Good without time, food bro. or sleep for the entire two and a half Trippin'. days. Doctors would be present to monitor Blaine throughout the stunt, but warned that That's increased like blood pressure celebrity. raised the risk of stroke or like, blindness while win? gravity could restrict the blood flow to his lower extremities. Come September 22nd, Blaine began the stunt, wearing a safety harness attached to a crossbar. He dangled by his feet from a large steel scaffold hanging over New York Central. Park. However, early into the stunt, bystanders began emailing news sources claiming Blaine wasn't hanging upside down as suggested. About once an hour, he has to come down for a medical check to stretch and to relieve himself. He rested mm. by standing on a platform for 10 minutes per hour before being hoisted back up. The frequent breaks he took where he was seen standing upright caused people to say he was cheating. Blaine continued with the stunt despite the negative reception. Right, we get out of here. It got even worse. On the final day of the stunt, thousands of fans came to witness Blaine's dive of death, which he said would be the coolest thing he's ever done if everything were to go dive as planned. Of death? Blaine planned to end his 60 hour stint hanging upside down with a 44 foot plunge to the ground, but the scheduled finale was interrupted by a 15 minute delay. The anticipation built. Nobody knew what was going to happen, but it was being hyped yeah, bam. up. Bam! He's on the, he's on the uh, claimed, floor. The wind picked up. And they were like, you can't of do this. TV special advised him against the spectacular exactly. ending. He eventually just jumped. Whoa, what the? The crowd didn't know if the stunt was actually performed, which led to this extremely anticlimactic situation where he was caught midair, then awkwardly dangled above the ground for a minute before being slowly carried away into the night like sky. Kanye. The New York Daily <laughs> News ridiculed Blaine with the headline, Give us a break. They said that there were more boos than cheers as the stunt ended. Uh. Blaine accepted responsibility for the outcome, disappointing fans. I knew that it didn't work right when all my friends called me up and said, Wait. What happened? Mm. I'm confused. This prompted a little break for David. He was world famous now and made some decent money from his movies and his decent book. Money, he became a go-to talent what? for celebrity birthday parties, corporate events, and charities. He didn't want to rush anything to avoid enough. another Good catastrophe. Trait. Plus, something amazing happened. In 2011, he had his first child, Dessa, with his mm. then-girlfriend, Alizé. David always said that if he had a wife or child, his performances would exactly. slow down, and that's exactly what happened. Exactly. Okay. Maybe just one more, because being electrocuted was something he always what? wanted to do. Becoming a dad, it changes you. You now have a purpose exactly. in life. I think differently about what I'm doing, and this time we have a very serious team, and I feel very confident that I'll pull this off and be perfectly fine at the end. With the help of the Liberty Science and Center, the TV a chainmail suit, make me stop and an enormous it. array of Tesla electrical coils, he planned to stand atop a 20-foot high pillar for 72 hours without sleep or food while being subjected to a million volts of electricity. Fast Blaine just prepared because. for the stunt at home, where he practiced giving himself mild electrical shocks. Nobody's ever been in the middle of a lightning storm for 72 mm. hours so it's hard to predict what's going to happen. The chainmail suit, commonly known as a Faraday suit, has been designed so that the current happen. would go through the suit and not through his body. Blaine's mm. only real physical challenge was standing still in a heavy suit for three days, which we exactly. all know is a piece of cake for him. He did suffer a little zap during the event. Whoa, you spit? But he recovered oh, very quickly. Although the stunt looked incredibly dangerous, it was more of a visual art piece than an insane endurance stunt, especially compared Yo, to his previous bro. work. The event Chris was broadcasted was live on YouTube entitled Electrified. Viewers located in London, Beijing, Tokyo, and Sydney had the opportunity to take turns controlling which of the seven coils were turned on and at what intensity. They mm. could also play music by producing different notes from the coils. The event had various entertainers and gave off the vibe of a festival or a big party. Yeah. Everything went as planned. Yeah. And I mean, it's the sun chilling. After spending three days and three nights standing in the middle of one million volts of electric currents at New York's Pier 54. Well, not Afterwards, eating, not he drinking. could walk with assistants, speak, be and crazy. engage with others before being taken to a hospital to be examined. David successfully cheated death on multiple different stunts for 15 mm. years. It was time to go back to his roots. In 2013, Blaine starred in a 90-minute ABC television special titled David Blaine, Real or Magic. He ventured across huh. America from New York to Los Angeles and visited tons of A-list celebrities 
celebrities like Robert De Niro, Jamie Foxx, Ricky Gervais, Jamie Katy Fox. Perry, Kanye West, Michael Kanye Phelps, West. President George W. Bush, yeah, among many presidents. others. In 2016, Drake. he had another special titled Beyond Magic. Ball back it followed then? the same formula as the last and featured another wide range of celebrities. Funny enough, it was these clips that made the rounds on social media that made him extremely famous to Gen Z. They probably don't even know him from his performance art, but rather his sticking oh. a needle through his arm or putting an ice pick through his hand. What? By the way, both of these tricks aren't really tricks. He just performed it so many times until he built up enough scar tissue so he wouldn't bleed. What? Same thing with him eating glass. So There's he... no trick. He is just eating glass. <laughs> oh, and making frogs magically appear out of his mouth? Well, he has to fast for 36 hours so he has no food digesting in his system. Then he drinks multiple gallons of water so the frogs have a safe place to live in his stomach. He swallows them. He can keep them there for as long as three hours while he does other things. Then he can force them up his esophagus and freak out his audience as they come out of his mouth. His final <laughs> in 2020 consisted of him strapping his hand to a this cluster a of 52 monster, helium yeah. balloons using a harness. He ascended nearly 25,000 feet it? into the sky before he released the balloons it? and free fell for a couple of seconds before deploying Wait, what, a parachute what, what, what if, to slow what if his descent. The frog? Easily the most beautiful visual performance <sighs> he has ever created and it was all dedicated to his daughter. At one mm. point, the world was convinced we were going to watch David Blaine die performing. He probably thought he would too. It seems yeah. like he wouldn't have even that cared as long as he that secured his, his legacy as the greatest performer of all time. Now he has a daughter to take care of and a mission to keep life. magic alive. He has inspired a whole new generation of magicians on TikTok. I feel like I am constantly seeing people perform magic tricks on the For You page. And if you think about it, Mr. Beast has mm. used David Blaine's formula to become nope. successful. Buried alive, nope. starving himself, 24 nope. hours in ice. However, Mr. Beast is pretty transparent about it being for views, money, and entertainment rather of than straight up course. endurance work. It's sad that many people you know what it is? Day, do not see the greatness in David's career. They try to find anything to negate the validity of his performance. I ain't going to Reddit. <laughs> okay, now I see what the haters, man. The haters, man. I'm going to Reddit. You don't go to that place. Come on, yo. What's wrong with you? You don't go to that place. Come on, yo. It's like a constant puzzle they feel like they need to figure out. As we all know, Magicians never reveal their secrets. And the real secret is how David survived his performances throughout the years. Mm. I'm not sure how, but I'm really glad he did. You know how. The experts next to him says how, right? Mr. Beast experts tell him how. And like, yo, if you feel this type of way, you know what I'm saying, tell us. You gotta get rehydrated, come on, man. Like, everything he did is possible. But I didn't even know about that story, man. I mean, he was doing tricks on the street before I was alive. Like, how can I know? That man's a monster. I mean, that man is a, he probably inspired the one of my favorite movies. Now you see me, come on, man. Come on, man.